What's up, guys? Joseph Hughes here, owner of Contractor Dynamics, and I have with me... Sydney Carell, marketing trainer at Contractor Dynamics. Man, I love the enthusiasm. You're really bringing it. I love it. I know you've had a busy week, so thanks for showing up with the energy. I'm excited to dive into this. I think this will be fun. This is a bit of a unique episode that we want to share with our audience to give them a little bit of an inside glimpse as to how we work with our clients inside our marketing training program, specifically how our rock star marketing trainer, Sydney, helps our clients really win with their marketing and really build that out and help them generate leads, appointments and sales and build their brands and all the other things that come along with that. And we want to share that to give you guys an inside glimpse. However, we're also going to be dropping you know nuggets on, on marketing do's and don'ts and best practices and pitfalls to be aware of. So whether or not you're interested in becoming a client, you're going to get value out of this episode just by thinking about marketing in a different way. And I think that's really valuable because we serve the roofing industry. It's an industry that is amazing. We love it. Super entrepreneurial, lots of like unlimited growth potential, but it's also an industry that is a little bit you know behind the times with marketing, automation, software, tools, and things like that, which is ultimately an awesome opportunity for those companies that really want to take advantage of those things and you know step into 2023 and, and innovate. And uh, so you'll be getting a lot of nuggets out of like you know what's working today in terms of marketing your roofing or contracting company versus like what's not working anymore as well, or you know what additional effort do you need to put forth today to get the same results as you've always been used to getting, right? So does that sound like a pretty good su summary, Sydney? I just need a break from talking, honestly. Yeah, definitely. I, I totally think that that'll encompass what we get to go over today. All right, cool. So just to set this up a little bit, we're going to dive in and let Sydney really talk about what she does best. Uh, she is an amazing asset to our team. Uh, just to frame up the conversation, we at Contractor Dynamics are a marketing training company. So we've been in business a little over 10 years. And what we do is we train roofing companies on how to do their own marketing, right? How to build out a marketing plan, how to create their own content and video content, how to run their own organic, that's their free content marketing on social media every day, how to run social media ads with Facebook and Instagram, how to generate their own appointments and sales, how to build a brand, how to build out a lead handling follow-up and nurture system, and really how to build like a, take all the different parts that, that, that roofing companies are doing with marketing online, even offline. Our clients are doing, some of our clients are doing TV, radio, billboards, direct mail, you name it. And we really help them on a macro level to put all those pieces together and, and put everything on the table, you know, what you're spending, what you're doing as far as activities and marketing and say, you know, does this need to stay? Does this have value? Should this go? Should we cut the budget here? Should we reallocate our, our resources, our energy, our budget is this other avenue? So really we are uh, it, your, you know, your, uh, I guess, marketing partner uh, for everything that you need to do with your European company in terms of marketing. We also provide uh, some business coaching inside our program, but that's another episode uh, that we recently recorded with Benny Fisher. Today, we want to talk specifically about how our training team, of which Sydney is a, a part and one of our leaders, really helps to dive in and work with our clients on a one-on-one -on -one basis to really build out and run marketing that, that produces an ROI, Okay, which is what we're all after, right? So... I think that frames it up pretty well. I'll turn it over to Sydney right now to give a little bit of an intro. Sydney has a very a relevant, strong background that puts her in a very unique position to be a trusted advisor to our clients with all things marketing and really all things, a lot of things related to their business that might not directly be marketing as well. So Sydney, why don't you go ahead and uh, introduce yourself, give us a little bit of a you know, paint a picture as to your background and where you came from and how you ended up here at Contractor Dynamics. Yeah, definitely. So my background is fairly unique, but I think it put me exactly where I need to be in terms of a couple of different niches. So I originally got my degree in business marketing, which, you know, business degrees and marketing degrees can be certainly helpful. I think it taught me a lot about how to work hard. However, I wouldn't say that I gained a ton from a digital marketing standpoint while getting my degree. 
And so right after that, I started working for a giant digital marketing corporation with um, 700 plus employees. It was massive. I juggled a pretty large client load there where I worked with clients from all over the world in all different industries. And I had one client that was a local roofing company, local to me, I'm located in Colorado, and he lived just like 30 minutes from me and he knew that he wanted an in-house marketing manager because he wanted more control over what was going on with his marketing and they really wanted to drive the bus with their marketing efforts and they needed a person to spearhead that. And so he approached me and he offered me a position to work for his roofing company. And that was my introduction into the roofing space. I had had a ton of experience in the digital marketing realm with a ton of different aspects of marketing that I addressed with all different industries. But the roofing industry was a unique one that I wasn't quite used to. And so when I started working as a marketing manager for a roofing company, that gave me the opportunity to really get to know the industry itself. So I learned a lot about how to apply the marketing knowledge that I had to the roofing industry. And then from that position, I migrated into a different position that was more on the operations side of a roofing company. And so I was in charge of putting together our repair department. So I spearheaded that effort. I was managing scheduling, creating estimates. I created Sumo Quote and I got um, our entire Sumo Quote system in place. A lot of different systems that I helped build there. And that was really incredible for me because I got to learn a lot about the intricate details of the roofing industry. Everything from like understanding pipe boots to understanding flashing and the role that it plays and being able to explain that to a homeowner when they ask questions. And so I got to know the roofing industry pretty deeply, which I love, but I found in my operations position that I really missed marketing. And that's what brought me back to Contractor Dynamics. I actually had the opportunity to go through the Contractor Dynamics program as a client when I was a newer marketing manager, just getting used to the roofing industry. And so I remembered my experience here and I thought that it would be a really good core value fit. And so I reached out and I have found my home here. Wow. Yeah, that's really cool. I mean, so our clients that are roofing companies, they get to work with Sydney and, and we have other marketing trainers as well that are amazing too. Uh, that, you know, Sydney has experience like with Job Nimbus, with Sumo Quote. So uh, I had a, a sales call today with a roofing company uh, in Texas, Shocker, and they're using Job Nimbus and they're like, hey, we'd love to be able to do these like the automated emails and things like that based on some, where someone is in our pipeline, the stages and things like that. And he's like, do you help with that? I was like, yeah, actually, Sydney has like hands-on Nimbus experience to, to work with that. So that background is, is awesome. And I love that you were a client and then just kind of like organically happen through uh, social media content, just kind of staying in touch and, and things like that. So it's interesting how, how things come full circle. Yes, I love it. So diving into what the contractor dynamics, and this, um, and this is not a sales pitch, right? This is, we, we, we provide a service. We're a marketing training company, okay? So in the roofing industry, there's a ton of different sales training options. There's amazing sales training people, there's sales training organizations, there are sales training conferences and events that you can go to. There's, there's many, many options depending on what your style is, what you're looking for, what type of company you are, residential, commercial, retail, insurance, you name it, right? With marketing, it's a little bit different. There aren't that many marketing training companies. In fact, we might be one of the only ones that focuses on marketing training for the roofing industry. So I like to share this kind of behind the scenes because it is something that is so new to so many companies. And I wanna share why it's such a valuable thing and again, not not a sales pitch, but you know, we we do provide a, a year long training program, and the best prospective clients that we speak with, the best clients that we end up enrolling, are the ones that really understand marketing at a pretty you know a, a basic level, and they really you know understand why they want to have someone in house, they want to do their marketing in house, and they've seen some of our content, and they get an inside look. And with a service based business, whether it's marketing training or roofing your prospective clients, like you can't really, there's no trial, right? There's no like 30 day trial. Like you can't put on one slope of someone's roof and be like, Hey, Mrs. Jones, do you like it? If so, I can do the rest, right? Like 
They just have to kind of trust you that you know what you're doing, that you have got a good track record, you've got good reviews, right? There's that no like and trust there. So this episode is is focused on providing value and also building that no like and trust with you, our audience. So our 12 month marketing training program is basically, we're helping you build out a marketing machine inside your company. That starts with building a game plan. I won't get too much into this because I'll let Sydney kind of paint that picture. Building that game plan, we we focus heavily on one-on-one training. So every single one of our clients gets teamed up with one of our marketing trainers here. And you're working with someone, the same person, for an entire 12 months and beyond, if you wish to stay with us beyond that 12-month period, to build out your game plan and be by your side like as you run your marketing, like any questions that you have, whether it's, you know, hopping on a phone call, on Zoom, email, whatever it is that, you know, that you have questions with, we are here for you. And if your dedicated marketing trainer is is not available in this immediate moment or, you know, they're on vacation or whatever, we've got a whole team of uh, over 12 people that are here to help you. So we're really good at tag teaming. And, uh, you know, one of Sydney's clients was just messaging me before, uh, like be right before this episode and I pinged Sydney on Slack. I'm like, hey, can you follow up with her? So like we're all like covering from one another. To so get that one-on-one training, we also have a small group, like community components of what we do, which is a private Facebook group. We have uh, small group training calls uh, throughout the week, every single week that you can pop in, get your questions answered, kind of like professor's office hours for those of you with that, that went to college. Um, you know, pop in, get any questions answered, stay sharp, you know, stay on top of your game, that sort of thing. And then we have a couple of additional components to what we do. We started hosting our own in-person workshops throughout the year where a lot of our clients will come and, and have that like in-person community vibe, uh, which is super valuable. So now this training program that we have called Platinum Marketing Training Program is for companies that are, they're wanting to build their brand, right? They want to build that know, like, and trust. They want to become a well-known company or one of the most well-known companies or a top of mind roofing company in their local area, okay? They don't just want to like buy leads. They don't just want to do door knocking. They don't want to depend on Google or anything like that. Like they want to build out a system for creating their own customers on a consistent basis. They want to build their brand. They want to attract top quality talent. So we recognize that this is not everyone in the roofing industry, but we are encouraged that, you know, every year that we're, you know, we continue to build momentum, there's more and more roofing companies that are, that are bringing on in-house marketing people, whether it's a full-time marketing manager, whether it's a a spouse, whether it's a niece, a daughter. Um, One of our clients has hired his mom to be his marketing manager. So really figuring out like how to build that out in-house. And that is what we specialize in. So Sydney, you've got a lot of experience in the industry. You've been with uh, Contractor Dynamics, I guess almost a year really, coming up on a year in August, I believe. Um, fast. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, seriously. And so you've seen a lot of, uh, you work with a lot of our clients. What's like, you know, the typical or, you know, the type of roofing company that is best positioned to to work with us in our marketing training program? I would say the ideal roofing company to go through the contractor dynamics program is going to be a company that has the manpower to be able to support their marketing goals. So if you are trying to do everything yourself, your marketing plan is going to look much different than uh, it would for someone who may have like a more developed sales team, perhaps a full-time or even a part-time marketing manager. The clients that tend to do best in our program are the ones that either have a dedicated person to help with the marketing or at least a team that is backing them up to help support those efforts, whether that be a sales team or um, other members like administrative members that are going to be helping gather content produce those uh, marketing efforts. Typically, we just want to make sure you have the manpower to be able to accomplish your marketing goals. Yeah, that's that's so true. That's something that we we learned uh, throughout 2022, uh, bringing on some clients that were not necessarily a good fit. We didn't know that at the time. It was kind of, uh, we, we experienced that where an owner just does not realistically have the time to like bolt on an additional eight hours or 10 hours a week uh, to do marketing, right? That's a roofing company owner. And so, I mean, just today, like I have actually, I don't do really many sales calls, but Dan and Alex, our, our sales guys are both um, b- both tied up for today and tomorrow. So I actually have three calls today with uh, clients, uh, previous clients, former clients 
that went through our 10 week program like a couple of years ago. I think one was actually from 2020 and they went through as owner operators, you know, got some value out of it, not a ton. And now they've all three of them reached out to me in the DMs because they have marketing people in place in their companies right now. So first guy this morning, he had his niece who is a, uh, a senior at Texas Tech University studying, um, I, th- I believe it's marketing, but really it doesn't matter. Um, but she has that, you know, the willingness to learn. Uh, the other one that I had this morning was a uh, the, the, the guy's uh, daughter, actually. And then the third one I have later today, I'm not sure who it is, but all three of these owners came back to me and said, hey, now I have a marketing person in place that can handle some of this stuff. They have a little bit of marketing background. They don't really know roofing and they don't know like enough to really drive a lot of results. So they need some training, right? So I think that's a really good place for us to come in, come alongside someone and really guide them on number one, on marketing and number two, specifically on roofing industry and how to market a roofing company. Cause some of them might've had experience working with like an e-commerce company or, you know, a boutique or a fitness brand or something like that. And then the roofing industry is like, you know, all the, just like any industry, you have all your, your terminology and jargon and, you know, ways to phrase things versus ways to not say things. And so having that person, you know, again, whether you work with us or not, having someone inside your company that's going to be focusing on marketing for at least 10 hours a week consistently is really what we see be a formula for, for great success with marketing, wouldn't you just say? Definitely. I would say that that is essential. If you have big marketing goals, then you have to have someone who has the bandwidth to implement them. Yeah. And we used to, um, we used to run a marketing agency where like we did all the marketing for you. We don't do that anymore. We do training. And the reason is like, you know, marketing used to be pretty easy in roofing. Like we used to run Facebook ads for our clients in Dallas and Denver. And like, quite frankly, it was pretty easy. It was easy for ourselves to generate leads for us too. Now skip forward to 2023. Like there's more noise in our world. We're hit with thousands of marketing messages every single day. There's more, you know, companies on social media in general. There are more roofing companies in every single market than ever before. So there's just like the bar is continually raised. And so like what used to work just does not work as well as it as it once did. So like having that component inside your company is is essential because, you know, at the end of the day, you're a roofing company in Atlanta, Georgia. You're selling the same products, the same warranties, maybe even using the same roofing crews as some other roofers in your area. Like what differentiates you? Like, why are you different? Why are people going to work with you? It's you. It's your company. It's your people. It's just the story you tell. It's the content that you share, the videos and things like that. Like that's how you stand out and that's how you build a memorable brand, right? So Sydney, diving into our clients that are in our program that you are currently working with, which is a couple dozen clients uh, that you are one-on-one working with right now, the ones that are getting the most value, can you describe like, you know, what they do, who they are, like, like what's the formula? Yeah, I'd say there's, there's a few different components that are going to play a role in this. Ultimately, the first thing is that you have to be willing to commit that time, which is what I touched on earlier, having someone in place to be able to help with that will definitely help you have the bandwidth to commit the time. But that's thing number one. The clients that tend to get the most value from our program are the ones who show up and commit the time. Number two is it's going to be the people who ask questions. Not only do they show up, but they are not afraid to ask questions. I 100% believe that no question is a dumb question. And I have had clients in the past who shoot me three or four emails a day just with questions as they think of them related to marketing. And I highly encourage that because that's what I'm here for. And I want you to lean on me and all of our training team wants you to lean on them uh, as you have questions come up about your marketing. And the third thing I'd say is those who show up on time and effectively manage their schedules. You can always count on our team to show up prepared on time, ready to work. And so if you subsequently do the same thing, then those are the clients that end up getting the most time with our team and then therefore the most value from the program overall. Yeah, that's that last point is so big. And that's, I think, an unattended, uh, an unintended consequence of like what we do. I never really pictured us like helping people hold themselves accountable to their calendar and their schedule and things like that. 
And we've gotten pretty rigid about that because, you know, ultimately it's from a place of love. Like we understand how much you can accomplish by putting things in your calendar and showing up on time and respecting one another's time that like, if you're, you know, a minute late, if your call with Sydney's at three o'clock and it's 301, like you're getting a message from her at 301. We started this at 315. It was 316. I didn't see Sydney in here. And I'm like, okay, there must be a technical, technical difficulty because there's no way she'd be late. Sure enough, 316, I pinged her on Slack. She's like, oh, it's like, I'm waiting for you to get in. It wasn't showing up, whatever. It was It was the software. We're both here. Um, but that accountability is is huge because I, like, what I think, and you, you, you know, share what you think is like, you know, it's like going to the gym, right? Like you, you can skip a day or two, but like if you get consistent with skipping days, then like that starts to become a new habit. And it's going to become that much harder to get back, get back into it. So showing up and like keeping that momentum going is, is very critical. I agree. And then to add on to that, I'd say it's also re- a respect thing. Like I highly respect our clients and I will do everything within my power to help them win. That's one of our core, core values is to help our clients and one another win. And I think part of that is me showing up on time in order to respect the client's and provide them with quality service. And I think it's only fair to require our clients to do the same so that we can be on the same page there and be as productive as possible during our meetings. Yeah, 100%. I mean, we're working, this is not a transactional business. This is a relationship-based business. We're working with our clients for at least a year and that mutual respect needs to be there. And I think there were a couple of times, Sydney, where you you were waiting for clients on Zoom for five, seven, 10 minutes. And then I think I forget what our policy is, but after five or 10 minutes, like we're gone and they would show up and get kind of mad that you weren't like sitting around waiting for them. But you know, that's like some tough love that we had to work on with our clients. Right. Oh yeah. I, our policy here at contractor dynamics is that we will leave a zoom link open for five minutes. And if you don't show up after five minutes, we're closing it out because we have other clients to attend to and we are going to respect your time. And we did you a service by showing up on time, prepared, ready to go. And we expect the same thing. And I have had some situations, a couple situations with clients where that has been a little bit of a learning opportunity and a bit of a learning curve. And that is the expectation that we set for our clients. And so the really interesting point of that though, is that the clients that had a difficulty showing up on time, now have me booked in their calendar, they prioritize our meetings, and they get their marketing tasks done on time as well subsequently. So they've been highly productive in our program since we've got on the same page about showing up on time. I think they're just scared of you. (laughs) Oh yeah, you should definitely be scared of me. (laughs) Yeah. Just kidding. You and Elizabeth, I think people are scared of you and they don't wanna disappoint you, but that's setting the standard and that's like, I don't want to say scared. That's, you know, just trying to be funny, but they are, they, they want to, we want people to, we don't want to go down to people's level. Like we want people to come up to our level and, and then, you know, there's other people that we look up to and we want to get up to their level. So like we want everyone to level up here. So let's dig into some of the tactical things. Uh, someone becomes a client. There's uh, I think we have a pretty smooth like enrollment process. What's that look like if someone were to become a client today on Thursday, June 1st, 2023? Well, the first thing that we are going to do is we're going to put you through our onboarding call process. We are going to communicate with you about when to be, where to be on our Zoom link, send you those details. We will put you through a conversation where you'll get to get to know our team members. We'll get to know you really well. Uh, And then we will teach you about the general structure of our program, the different calls that we have to offer. And then from that call, we immediately launch into our initial game plan call. So that initial game plan call is going to be a one-on-one call with your marketing trainer where they dive deep into getting to know the foundation of your business. We want to know who you are, what you do, what makes you stand out. And we want to get crystal clear on who your target audience is and who your ideal customer is. The reason that we dig so deep into that on our initial call is that we need to recognize what our goals are and where our target is. Because if we build an entire marketing strategy that is not at all in line with the target for your business, then we will never end up where you want to end up as a company. And so in that initial game plan call, we're essentially gonna analyze where the gap is and we're going to create a plan and a strategy for how to get there. And then from that point, we have consistent calls 
to hold you accountable. So those consistent calls take place every other week. We will set those up on a recurring call schedule. Again, they are one-on-one calls with your marketing trainer. And during those calls, we will be holding you accountable to getting your action items completed. We will be discussing strategy. We will be analyzing ways to optimize the campaigns that we have running, uh, discuss new strategies that we need to implement for all different types of marketing channels. And so from that point on, you stay on a recurring call schedule, we'll hold you accountable, and we'll continue to work through all kinds of different marketing strategies on those calls. Awesome. Yeah. Having your personal marketing concierge by your side whenever you want. So what about in between those every other week calls? How do how are you working with clients um, inside that? We have multiple ways that you can connect with us in between those calls. I have never heard a client say that they are unable to get a hold of a marketing trainer or their marketing trainer within our program. And the reason for that is, is that we have built in structures to make sure that you have help at every step of the way. Even if you're in between your game plan calls, like let's say you don't have a game plan call scheduled with me this week, Joe, but you need help with something urgent. There are a few different ways to get a hold of us. Obviously, there's email. We're very responsive on that. You can always expect a reply within a business day. Another way you can get a hold of us is through that Facebook group that we have available to all of our clients. And then the third way is going to be through regular group calls. So every single week, three times a week, we have group calls that serve as open office hours for our clients. So if you're a client with us if and you have a call on a Wednesday, you know that you can always hop into a group call to get that question answered and you will have marketing trainers there to help you work through that problem. Additionally, we always have one-on-ones that we can offer to clients as well. So if we want to have more frequent meetings than every other week, we're happy to do that. Uh, Typically, the every other week schedule tends to work really well for clients because it gives them enough time to complete their action items that we assign to them. But if you have some urgent things that you're working through or a new strategy that you want to discuss, we're totally happy to hop on an additional one on one call with you as well. Yeah, that's so valuable. Like if it's a fit, you know, you have a 15 minute Calendly link, right? So if someone just has a quick, you know, question or they have a Facebook ad they're they're about to like hit publish on and they just want someone to look at it, like you look at it before they do that, then they can always, you know, hop on and get a hold of one of us. And, uh, and I think we do a really good job at cross training in terms of like, if your marketing trainer is not available, you know, someone else can hop in. So we have everything in the cloud. We have access to every all client information that we keep secure, but like all of us can see it. So there's never like, you know, a gap in like, hey, what are you working on? Right. So one of our, our marketing trainers is actually Lily is in South Africa right now for a couple of weeks, uh, living it up on a, you know, a vacation that she planned a while ago. And and we're all, you know, covering for her. And, and there's no, I don't think there's really any gaps there because we can all see what's going on. We have our CRM that we keep everything updated in. And, uh, you know, it's again, helping our clients win, making sure that we are, you know, fully informed and we're not hopping on the call of the client being like, okay, well, I know you need help, but tell me about your business and what you're doing, right? Like we come to that call prepared, like knowing pretty much exactly what's going on, right? Right. The other thing I'd say that's really unique about the structure that we have here at Contractor Dynamics with having multiple marketing trainers that can help answer questions is that a lot of our clients actually feel very confident leaning into that, which I love because I've worked with agencies in the past where I try to get a hold of somebody because my point of contact is out of town for some reason. And then that person has clearly no idea what they're doing. Not, not only do they not know about your business, but they also lack the expertise that they need to be able to help you efficiently. And the cool thing about our team is that all of our clients rely on all of us. So while Lily's out, her clients feel confident leaning on the rest of our team to get their questions answered efficiently. Yeah, it's a great point. I think part of the strength of that lies in the fact that we focus only on on roofing companies, right? So we're not, you know, helping out a law firm and a chiropractor and a restaurant and a fitness business. There's not really, you know, all of our clients, a lot of them have similar challenges and working through similar things and similar type of marketing. So there's not much of a learning curve that goes on. Like when you become a client, or when we have to like step in and you know cover for one another. So I think there's a lot of value there um, in terms of like, you know, not having that knowledge gap. 
So in between those those one-on-one calls that you have, the game plan calls that are pretty structured, obviously clients are reaching out to you. What are some of the common things that clients are reaching out to you about? What are some of the common questions that they're asking? The most common question that I get would be evaluating campaign data, especially if we're launching something new, right? If we're launching some kind of new marketing campaign, whether it be related to Facebook ads um, or other marketing objectives, we will get common questions regarding evaluating data in time periods shorter than those two weeks. So we'll encourage clients to reach out to us beforehand so we can evaluate things and optimize them as needed. And at the beginning of the ad evaluation process, we oftentimes lead clients through that where we will teach them what the different data metrics mean. And then we will teach them how to make determinations on what needs to be changed with those ads based on what the data is telling us. Now, as clients move through their time in our program, we're going to switch that narrative and we're instead going to ask you, okay, based on this data metric, what do we need to change or improve? So that that way clients can start to um, really get confident with implementing data changes and um, optimizing ads and campaigns themselves. Uh, But I would say that's probably the number one most frequently asked question that we get in between those game plan calls. Yeah, that's a big one. I mean, I I find myself like I've asked you about things like that for for contractor dynamics because I'm not in Facebook Ads Manager every day and things are always changing and uh, it's it's it is it's hard to keep on top of of what's going on. So that's crucial, right? Because you don't want to spend a lot of time and spend a lot of money on something that is just kind of set up for failure because you forgot to do one little thing. So there are quite a few moving parts. It's really good to get to get eyes on those things. Absolutely. And we hop on calls evaluating those little setting changes all the time. Have you ever heard that, uh, I don't know what you call it, heuristic for learning something where it's like, and I think you just kind of alluded to it, where as far as campaign data, you'll have a new client and you're going to go into their Facebook ads manager. You're going to you know share a screen and you'll look at it. And it's like, number the first step is the new client will watch you do it. And then the second time you guys are doing it together. And then the third time you're watching the client do it. So that's how you transfer that knowledge into the client is that maybe it's not just one, two, three, maybe it's three times, the first three times, the second three times, the third three times, but is that sort of the progression on how you help clients like understand how to make decisions based on their data? It's definitely a progression and everybody learns at different paces. So I'd say like, Maybe for some clients, it is like we go over each of them three times. And for other clients, it might be 10 times. And that's totally okay. Um, We're going to meet you where you're at. And I'll be able to determine pretty quickly how you're feeling about the ad data. And I'm happy to help you learn what that means. But eventually, I want you to get to a point where you are driving the bus entirely. And I'll, I'll use that exact phrase on client calls. I will tell a client, okay, I've seen you navigate this platform a few times now, so I'm going to let you drive the bus and you just let me know when you need help. And I'll, I'll let them work through it. I'll let them click around. They might make a few mistakes and if I need to correct them, I will. Uh, but yeah, I like to let clients work through it themselves when they get to the point where they're ready to do so. That makes a lot of sense. I know you don't have kids yet. Uh, I do. And it's very similar. And I'm not in no way uh, saying that our clients are children, but like it's the same thing with kids, right? If we do, if we always do everything for them, then they're not going to learn how to do things for themselves. And so we need to empower them, enable them. And sometimes that means making little mistakes here and there, but learning from them as we go, which is one of our core values, continually learning and improving. So those are some key areas where you help doing this well with contractor dynamics almost a year and then a couple of years prior to that do you see like common areas where our clients will get stuck with their marketing and just like man like uh, they're banging their head against the wall they're just like not able to figure it out yes i have seen this a few times i would say it usually boils down to three areas where owners may get stuck with this The first one is bandwidth, right? So you are juggling a million different things and you just don't have the time that you need to dedicate to that, which also goes back to what we discussed earlier, which is getting help. That's a really important thing to learn as an owner is um, recognizing when it's time to delegate 
And so when you have a marketing manager uh, or a team in place to help you with some of that, that can definitely assist you getting out of that sort of stuck phase. The second thing that I tend to see most often is just a lack of accountability. And honestly, that's where we come in. That's one of the incredible things that our team offers with those recurring meetings is just that continued accountability so that you don't keep putting something on your to-do list and then never getting it done. Uh, If you continually do that within our program, we are certainly going to show you some tough love. We're going to remind you of what your goals are and why we have these systems in place so that you can actually accomplish those goals. Because there was a reason that you set those in the first place, and we're here to help you accomplish those. And then the third place where owners tend to get stuck is they just lack the ability to train a marketing manager. And we can also help with that. I recognize as someone who went through business school that this uh, does not necessarily prepare you for managing marketing within a roofing company. Although a lot of people think that a business degree like gives you rite of passage into marketing, I, I would disagree with that. But I can say that hiring a marketing manager that specializes in the roofing industry is very unique. And so we have a lot of owners that tend to get stuck with teaching them either the roofing side or the more complex marketing side. And so we can help owners get out of that stuck place by helping train their marketing managers. Yeah, I think that's almost... um... It's a match made in heaven for us when we when we come across like a roofing company owner who is like and I'm and I'm I can picture one particular guy I'm talking with right now has a very successful business understands the importance of marketing I'm not helping him hire a marketing manager but I'm guiding him on where to find one and all that sort of thing he wants to find a marketing manager but he is not a marketing guy he's an old school roofing company owner. And he, he's very knowledgeable about a lot of things, but marketing is not one of them. He realizes that. So when he hires his marketing manager, it's like, well, he doesn't have the time or the knowledge and how to, how to train this person. So it's like, well, it just makes sense. Like you don't have to train the person. We will train that person, right? So for us, that's like a perfect marriage. But one caveat there, um, this guy, his name is Mike. I won't say his last name or company, but he should, you know, you're if you're a roofing company owner, and you're doing that, don't set yourself up for failure by just getting your marketing manager trained and not being involved because the risk is, I, you know, I know we want all of our team members to stay forever and, you know, we want to be blissfully, uh, you know, working together forever, but that doesn't always happen, right? So that marketing manager leaves, then you as an owner are stuck back to square one. If that happens, then you as a roofing company owner, you're, you're going back to like the beginning where, you have no marketing manager and you don't know anything about marketing. So I would say for every owner, at least understand enough to like have a conversation and be able to go out and like find another marketing manager. Cause that's happens, you know, to a lot of our clients where the marketing manager leaves and, you know, maybe someone else can step in or the owner can step in you know, momentarily, temporarily until they find a new marketing manager and we kind of bridge that gap. But, you know, don't, don't hire a marketing manager and then hire a contractor dynamics to be like, all right, marketing is solved. Check. I'm moving on. You know, see you guys later. Like take ownership of, of that aspect of your business as an owner. Definitely. In fact, I recommend for most of my marketing managers that I work with that they have consistent meetings with the owner. That way there is a seamless communication process. The owner has a very clear picture of what is going on in the marketing so that if they do hire a new marketing manager to come in and help with the marketing that's already in place, they have an idea of what is actually put in place so that they can point the new marketing manager in the right direction to resume what they've been working on. Yeah, hundred percent. I love that. That the same page meeting, whatever you want to call it, like that's, that's essential. Um, it's, it's essential. So Sydney, what are, I think that you really enjoy what you do. What are some of the most like, I don't know, what are some of your most favorite wins? Not specific, but like, you know, when a client has this breakthrough or they do this thing, like what excites you the most? I think a lot of clients have been told very broad, generic ideas of what they should do with their marketing. Like, 
oh, run Google guaranteed local service ads or, oh, run Facebook ads. And a lot of them have actually tried those things in the past and they didn't work because there wasn't much strategy. There wasn't a lot of detail that went into the setup, et cetera. And so one of my favorite things to watch and be a part of is when we help clients tweak different pieces of their marketing strategy to help them gather some wins, whether that be leads, or people recognizing them at local networking events or gathering more reviews and subsequently seeing more leads come into their Google local service ads. Those are such huge wins and people tend to get so excited about those wins. And when clients win, that just makes me so stoked because I love to see it. I love to feel the energy and I love to help them produce that proof of concept that we talk about as they learn things within our program. Right on. Yeah, that proof of concept is, to me, it's the biggest thing. It's like when they finally do it themselves, like they run their own marketing, they run a campaign, it generates a lead, an appointment, a sale, and then getting to the point where there's consistent flow there of sales, like that's awesome. The one client that reached out to us and left that nice voicemail last week uh, in a very crowded market, He's like, and I just, he just dropped me this voice message in the DMs. He's like, I just, I never thought that this would happen. Like we tried this marketing in the past. Like, you know, I know we signed up with you guys. I wasn't really sure if it would work. And he's like, now we're at the point where it's working so well and much faster than we anticipated. And just to hear him, like the, like the tone in his voice of like, wow, I finally like figured out this part of the puzzle. And of course, it's going to change next week and we'll have to keep up with that. But, you know, that doesn't happen all the time, honestly. Sometimes it takes clients a bit longer. Sometimes it's frustrating. Like everyone's starting at different points and some clients put in more effort than others. And some clients are just, you know, smarter than others or better on video than others. So like everyone has their own pace, right? But for me, that is the, uh, that's, that's the best. When they have that belief in themselves, because that's what we want them to have is control over their marketing, control over their growth so that they don't have to depend on others to to grow. That confidence is so transformational. I love seeing that in a client because once they hit that point, that's when they start to really take their marketing into their own hands. And then I get to make small adjustments with them while they're really driving the bus, kind of as I said earlier. Yeah, and then their, you know, their their mindset shifts from maybe scarcity into more abundance. Like you're not like, hey, how can I generate leads from this Facebook ad to, okay, now I know we can do this. What else can we do? Can we use this for recruiting? Can we use this for commercial? Can we you know, use this for the new office that we're opening? Whatever it might be. Now they start to think of all the possibilities, which to me is like, there's no, there's no end with branding and marketing. There's no sky's the limit. We can do whatever we want. Oh yeah, that's when it gets fun. <laughs> Exactly. So, and I know, hey, from a business owner, when you're operating from a place of scarcity, like it sucks because your marketing's not good. People can feel it, they can smell it, you know. Uh, but when you're at a good point and you're operating from a place of abundance, your your messaging's better, your videos are better, your your marketing's better, and uh, I don't know, it's just it's it's an overall better experience. So I love when I see that in other owners because I know, you know, I know the 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 before and after myself. I don't know if this is an, a, a possible question to answer. If you had a magic wand uh, solution for every roofing company, what would that be? Or if you started your own roofing company, like what? what's the thing that like most people aren't doing that you're like, oh man, I wish more people would do this. Or if they just did this and they could really, you know, succeed, anything like that come to mind? There's one thing. I love implementing retargeting, and I think that a lot of companies do not take advantage of that incredible opportunity, right? We put so much energy, time, and attention, and effort into lead generating and to building the brand and whatnot, but we forget that we can continually stay in front of people over and over and over and over and over again. And if we can make your market feel like you are everywhere all at once, then you will start to see things really become super fruitful. And so I think a really effective way of implementing that sort of omnipresence concept is through retargeting strategies, which is a more advanced topic that we cover in our program. 
but I think it is an incredibly magical solution. And I love building those out with clients and seeing the looks on their faces when we tell them all the different retargeting opportunities that we have. It's, it's baffling, but it is truly a wide open area of opportunity in the marketing world in general, but definitely within the roofing industry. So if I could wave my magic wand or if I owned my own roofing company and I were to implement something immediately to get a leg up on my competition, that is one of the things I would do hands down. Ooh, I love it. You should uh, look at our retargeting strategy. Maybe we can improve it, but uh, I think we do a really good job. And again, just today, like those three sales calls that I have with three former clients, one's from 2020, two are from 2021. So we're talking about three years later, two years later, two years later. These are people that I'm trying to think, they don't interact with my content. I put out a lot of content. We put out a lot of content. As far as I know, they don't interact with our content. Like they don't comment on it or anything like that. I don't think they're really super active on social media, but all three of them reached out last week and they're like, oh yeah, I've been seeing your stuff. Like, you know, definitely need help in those areas. So people are watching and whether it's a marketing training company like ours, or a roofing company, we all have what are considered high consideration purchases. So if you're gonna invest money and time into a 12 month marketing training program, we don't expect you to like see one ad from us and make a decision on the spot. And the same thing goes with your market. You're selling a 10, 20, 30, $50,000 roof. You don't expect someone to see an ad from you, set an appointment for Saturday, sign a contract, get a new roof on Tuesday, and that's that. Like. That does happen if you're really good. Uh, there's a really high need, but most people are going to need weeks or months or maybe even a couple years to make a decision. And people put things off, like especially a roof where, let's face it, it's not like the sexiest part of your home. It's not like you're getting a brand new kitchen or you know landscaping or a pool or something like that. Kind of kind of put it off until you need it. So you never know when someone's going to be ready. So this retargeting that Sydney's talking about is. Like the way that we implement it at Contractor Dynamics for ourselves, we'll put out videos as social media ads on Facebook and Instagram. And we might have 10 or 15 videos running and we're building up an audience of people that, that are watching 15 seconds or 30 seconds of those videos. That's you guys listening and watching. And then if you watch 15 seconds of our video, you're automatically getting put into this retargeting audience where you're going to see another type of ad from us, another piece of value. Maybe it's driving you to our Facebook group or to our website or whatever, but it's just staying in front of you and being an undeniable presence, having that top of mind awareness. So that is uh, that's, that's a whole other episode. We can geek out over retargeting, but I love that you've taken over that. You've taken ownership of that. You recently uh, revamped and reshot the training video inside our training portal, uh, which I don't think we mentioned that, but we have a whole online training university it's all it's roofing marketing like we have 111 something plus videos in there all sorts of different stuff that's in there that our clients have access to 24 7. so uh yeah thanks for doing that that was huge yeah it was super fun, I super that fun. you're such a nerd you're like yeah super fun <laughs> you're talking that's what i do in my spare time i just like shoot retargeting training videos for our clients <laughs> Maybe not in my spare time, but I definitely enjoy it for a job. <laughs> All right, good, good, good. All right, well, let's let's land this plane here. I think that was a really good, I mean, obviously I'm biased, but I think that was a pretty good rundown. As far as how we work with our clients, the types of clients that really succeed with marketing, the types of roofing companies, again, whether you become a client or not, the types of roofing companies that really have success with marketing, what it takes to win with marketing. Because I think... We talk with dozens of roofing company owners every week, whether it's clients, whether it's in our in our Facebook groups, whether it's you know me on the business development end. And like the overwhelming thing is like, hey, there's all this marketing knowledge and options out there. There's offline, online, Google, Facebook, all these TikTok, all these different things. Um, I don't know. Like I want to do marketing. I just don't know what to do. I don't know what pieces I should grab and how to put them in the right place at the right time in the right sequence, because the sequence is very important here. And so helping companies really like make sense of all that is uh, is really rewarding. So again, whether or not we ever talk with you, get some clarity, learn, at, learn how marketing works so that you can identify the pieces that are going to work to get you from where you are to fill that gap, like Sydney said, uh, to where you, you wanna be ultimately. 
All right, everyone. So I hope that was valuable. Uh, we had fun doing it. It's always good to uh, to catch up and, and talk. talk. You know, we all like talking about what we do, obviously. But um, you guys should do this for your market, too. Like, you know, you're a roofing company. You should sit around, turn on the old, you know, iPhone or whatever you have and record a video about what you do and how you do it and share that with your market. You can do the same exact thing. Build that know, like, and trust, get people to identify with you, get them to feel the warm and fuzzies about you so that they eventually maybe reach out to you or refer you to a friend or something like that. So hope you guys found this valuable. If you'd like to learn more about this marketing, this amazing marketing training program that we keep talking about, then click the link below if you're watching this on YouTube or somewhere else, or go to our website at contractordynamics.com. We've got links there to our Facebook group, some other free training videos. You can schedule a call with someone here on our team to learn more about it. Check out some of our client success stories right there on our website, uh, roofing company owners and operators that we've helped uh, over the years really win with their marketing. So thanks for tuning in. Thank you, Sydney, for coming on and sharing your knowledge. I know your time is very valuable. Thank you so much, and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you for having me.